Melbourne Gulf. That's not right. Green zone. Honest mistake. Seriously, my immediate response to the trailer was, oh, another Bourne film. And that's not because it's Paul Greengrass and Matt Damon, or even the fact that they went ahead and put from the director of The Bourne Ultimatum and The Bourne Supremacy. I think it was in that order. I'm not entirely sure why did people like Ultimatum more than Supremacy. Anyway, it's because the trailer was very much edited to look like more born. Right down to the evil man in a suit CIA dude getting a call from Damon in which he says, I know what you did. Okay, so it's not quite, I remember, I remember everything, but still, it, it's in the same ballpark. So for anyone wondering, no, this is not more born. It was made to look like it in the trailer, but the film is not born. There are some similarities. The US government is again, you know, the bad guy, and in general, to some extent, authorities and those that blindly follow orders. Damon is playing about the same type, you know, wanting to find the truth and fairly driven, not quite Jason Bourne driven. Another similarity is that this also uses the handheld camera. Now, I know that some people don't really like that, and if you don't, this is not a movie for you. This won't make you like it anymore. I personally didn't get a headache, though near the end I got kind of confused as to what exactly was going on, who was where, who was doing what, to whom. Similar to how difficult I found it to follow the conclusion of the Born Supremacy. Other than that, I can't really say anything about the camera work other than if you like the style, you're gonna like it. It's good, it's well edited, the cinematography is really good, and it does put you right there in the action. And it, to me anyway, felt just as right for this movie as it did for Born 2 and 3. This is perhaps more of a political thriller than what the Born films were. It's very exciting throughout when there isn't adrenaline pumping action going on, there's, you know, thick tension. And I'm not going to claim that this movie lost me for a second of the 1 hour 45 minute running time. Character development and acting are really good. And the dialogue is the same kind of very to the point and smart and a lot of information in not that many lines as it was in the Bourne films. Although there are a couple of lines that just really spell it out as if one of the writers thinks that at least some of the audience members are complete and utter morons. The message is extremely obvious and rather dated. If anyone is in fact surprised by the revelation of this movie, then how on earth did you miss it? Have you not been watching the news for the last seven years? Seriously, this is not a recent discovery. We have known this for years. But yeah, all in all, it's fun. I was hoping for an entertaining ride, and that's what I got. No more, but certainly no less, either. If you like political action thrillers, if you like Paul Greengrass's directing style, if you like Matt Damon, if you like the subject matter, if the setting intrigues you, by all means go for it. Don't expect it to tell you anything you didn't already know, and don't expect its politics to be balanced. That was my spoiler free review. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Chief Warrant Officer Roy Miller is done following orders. Except for the ones he gets from Marty. So, when did you get that bloody nose? I think the more pressing question is, when did you get x-ray vision? Had you even seen me from the front before this conversation? How can you even tell? There's barely any blood. I get why he didn't actually talk to the first prisoner that he got into the cell of. But is it just me, or was it kind of a short, awkward silence? Honestly, I was half expecting Freddy to go like, So, uh, how about weather, eh? just to say something, you know. 
for all the times there were interpreters in scenes, the characters that had to be able to speak English had no trouble speaking English when it really mattered. There were several very anti born moments in this movie, but I think one of the strongest is when he meets, you know, his clear nemesis guy, and he just, you know, jumps at him to get him to not shoot Al Awari, I think his name was, and then that's it. I was actually expecting the guy to shoot Damon before trying to shoot Al Awari. Am I the only one who thought it looked really stupid in the trailer when, you know, the nemesis guy just, you know, knocks him over? I mean, it might have been because it seemed like such a minor push, like, you know, the playground, eh, kind of thing. I mean, I was thinking, okay, are we really supposed to take that as, like, some big strong offense? Wow, the frailty of the male ego. But at least it was a little bit more than that in the film. He even got a bloody nose, just as the reporter who could somehow tell, even though it wasn't particularly visually obvious. Well, she is a reporter, she can probably smell blood. I suppose it helps the film, you know, dramatically and all, that the guy is dying in his cell, but why would they let him nearly die if they want information out of him? That doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, from a purely cynical, pragmatic standpoint, why would you let an informant die? He's not going to give you many answers once he's dead. Am I the only one who expected the he was in the Republican Guard Freddy thing to pay off or something for like Freddy to respond? No, what he just told me proves that he's, you know, innocent. I don't know, some indictment of Guantanamo Bay would have made the film a bit more relevant. I think it would have been good if we knew more clearly what Freddy had of reasons for shooting Alawari. I mean, I'm not gonna go claiming the guy was innocent because the film didn't make him out to be innocent. But just, I don't know, a hint, like, you know, you know what he did to my family? Something. Is it just me, or did Freddy not start limping until he had to run somewhere? And then they said, oh, the limping guy, as if he had constantly been doing that. I honestly didn't notice it until then. And from there on out, he was pretty much limping every time you saw him. As nice and as satisfying as it at least potentially was that Roy got to write an article in which he revealed that there were no WMDs, the intel was false, all of that, the guy had no proof. I mean, the proof died with Alawari. I mean, was he wearing a wire that we didn't know about? All there is is this one soldier who can give his word that what he wrote is true. He sent the story to every major news source. That fucking asshole. There goes my exclusive. There goes my Pulitzer. That goes my credibility since I wrote all these stories where I claimed there was good intel. For anyone out there who has this feeling that the trailer gave them a really strong impression that this was going to be like pure born and he was going to go completely rogue and all that, part of it was that the trailer was very carefully edited to make it look like Matt Damon was firing the RPG at the helicopter and then showing him fighting back from captivity and running around with the AK. You know, stuff that happened in the last portion of the film. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.